Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is September 25th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery across the Northeast Pacific Ocean. We got the Hawaiian Islands bottom center, Pacific Northwest to the upper right. We got a frontal system mainly bringing its energy into British Columbia here, but we'll take a look at those details and we'll take a look at what is coming over the next few days. We got a big pattern change rolling in here. Some much more fall like weather will be returning to the area, and we'll take a look at what we can expect from that. You can also so see we got Hurricane Narda down here off to the south. And it is that time of tropical systems here across the Pacific Ocean. And some of those uh, can wreak havoc in our jet stream and impact weather here in the Pacific Northwest all the way from the Western Pacific Ocean. You can see some of these tropical systems out here, again, up here, injecting some of their energy into our jet stream. It changes Rossby wave configurations, ridges and troughs, and just exactly what we get here in the Pacific Northwest. There's Japan right there. Now, taking a look here at where we are this morning, you can see we've got that Labor Mountain fire are still burning out there right near Highway 97. I know it's been close on the highway at times and it already producing some pretty good amounts of smoke this morning. You can already see the hot spot on that fire. Got some low clouds out there. Woke up to that over here near SeaTac Airport and you can see that kind of across the Kitsap Peninsula. Some fog out there into some of the interior valleys of the Cascades as well. And again, the smoke drifting off right now to the east. So we're not dealing with much smoke here across western Washington, western Oregon, BC, but you can see that frontal system out there as well. Now, taking a look here at the smoke over the next 48 hours. Again, look at the Labor Mountain Fire and the Wildcat Fire actually producing decent amounts of smoke as we go through the day today. Bear Gulch still producing some smoke, so you might smell a little bit of that, but it shouldn't be as widespread as what we had a couple days ago, and, the, uh, and that's moving off to the east. So hopefully this next round of frontal systems can really start to put a dent in some of this fire activities. That Labor Mountain Fire is particularly nasty out there, and if we look at lightning strikes the last 24 hours, Hours, nothing to speak of no surprise there and if you want your own affordable home weather station you can still get it before these frontal systems start to roll in as we go through next week so check it out click on the link down below very fun weather station you can see everybody else who has one out there if you are in tohola if you're a resident of tohola contact me we'll get you a weather station out there as well right at the end of highway 109 now, taking a look here, European model, upper level over California right now, still some ridging above normal heights here across Pacific Northwest. Kind of a dry cold front moving in as we go through tonight. Going to get windy here, eastern Washington. There's red flag warnings up. I'll show you more on that here in a moment. Ridge temporarily rebuilds as we go through Friday. Might get a nice lenticular show Friday or Saturday across some of the Cascades up into British Columbia and for Washington also as that system is moving into BC. But then we get the big pattern change coming here. Look at this trough setting up it's shop right off our coast as we go on in through next week multiple lobes rotating around frontal systems precipitation much more fall like weather approaches much colder air aloft rolling towards the region as we go towards the end of the month and on in through early october now, taking a look at the precipitation, you can see Western BC continues to get some of that as we go through the day today, tonight, and then we go on in through Friday, a stronger low rise into Southeast Alaska, continuing to pump precipitation into Western BC. Again, largely missing uh, initially uh, portions of Vancouver, Southwest BC, getting a little bit out of it, but Seattle and Portland, not much all the way on in through the day Friday. Then we go into Saturday morning. Look at that precipitation just continuing through Vancouver Island into Western BC, and we have have to wait all the way until we go on to probably Sunday night or very early Monday morning for the next frontal system to roll in towards Seattle, Portland. Not a bad frontal system there. It's got a little bit of a punch to it. And then we scroll on in towards Monday. See showers behind that system there. And then look at this next low on last night's European model. That's a pretty strong storm out there right off the Oregon coast. Moves up off the Washington coast. 981 millibar low rotating there. Spinning some precipitation back across the region. Maybe some locally windy conditions out of that one. Don't want to get caught up in those details too much just yet. It's still a little ways off in the forecast though. But if we look at total precipitation in inches on last night's European artificial intelligence, look at the plethora of precipitation western british columbia is getting as we scroll on through this weekend and then finally it pivots through portions of western washington and western oregon of course lesser amounts east of the mountains but additional fronts will be moving through probably as we go through next week you can see seattle totals continue to creep up there as we go on in through next weekend also but some huge amounts across some portions of bc vancouver island actually clipping portions of the olympic mountains again we'll be watching that over the next few days to see just how much that precipitation will be making its way down south and across portions of Washington and Oregon. 
So again, I mentioned that dry cold front. So as we go through the day today, you can kind of see the westerlies are blowing, but they really pick up as we go through the afternoon hours. Look at that ripping across the Columbia Basin. East slopes of the Cascades, Washington, northern portions of Oregon, down the Strait of Juan to Fuca. Some pretty strong winds there as we go on in through this evening and tonight. So watch out for the blowing dust. This is going to be uh, accompanied with some low relative humidity across the east slopes as well. That's why they have red flag warnings out. I'll show you that starting right now. You can see it includes just places east of the crest, Wenatchee, Yakima, Moses Lake, Pasco, Ritzville, Wilbur, Schland, Winthrop, Omic, Spokane, Pullman, and just off to the west of Lewiston. You can see some of these gusty winds there, low relative humidities, and any of these fire, fires could spread rapidly or any new fires could spread rapidly as well. Watch out with grills, cars, campfires. Don't drag your chains. You guys know the drill. Areas of blowing dust, check it out Thursday afternoon as low as half a mile. And of course, low confidence really in the impacts here because it's going to be hit and miss nature. But yeah, I-90, Highway 2, watch out for that blowing dust. Slow down, don't stop on the highway or the interstate or anything if you do encounter it. Now, uh, Pendleton also, in Condon Fossil, Dallas, Boardman, Pendleton, Walla Walla, yeah, you guys are all under this red flag warning. This starts at about, what, 11 a.m. this morning. I think it starts for 1 p.m., but right around noon here, let's just call it. And again, fires may exhibit rapid growth and spread. So uh, National Weather Service Missoula is also talking about the pattern change, bringing cooler and wetter weather next week. So that's that frontal system and those troughs or the trough and the frontal systems that, uh, that we have been talking about here. So you can see the National Weather Service offices starting to pick up on that as well. So here's today's high Thursday. We go through Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We warm up a little bit Saturday. You can see it across the region. But then we start to bring the trough in here as we go through Sunday, Monday. You can see it's really cool down across the area as we go through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, on in through next week as we start to get a bit more active, and then who knows what's going to happen after that. So looking at a wider view of the Gulf of Alaska, artificial intelligence, we're going to look off into the extended forecast a bit. And there's that cold front moving through the dry cold front, the windy conditions as we go through this afternoon and tonight. Ridge temporarily builds and Western BC continues to get precipitation, but then that frontal system will pivot through as we go through Sunday night into Monday. And you see that trough extended all the way down towards Pacific Northwest as we go through the early portion of next week. Multiple frontal systems, multiple chances of precipitation here across the area as we go through next week. And it kind of keeps things a bit active also through the extended forecast. Look at that trough kind of pivoting right across the Pacific Northwest with the ridge really ramping up here out over the Gulf of Alaska and the Pacific Ocean. You're European our European ensemble mean. This is the deterministic ensemble mean. So this is uh, the average of all 50 ensemble members. Dry cold front, ridging builds, frontal system kicks through. So our confidence is increase, increasing quite, quite rapidly here as we go through next week. A little bit of a tongue twister there. Uh, and it sticks with us for a while as well as we go on in towards Tuesday night. Now, this is Quileute Airport. You can kind of see the same thing here. The 500 millibar heights are dropping off as we go on in towards the early portion of next week, kind of showing that trough setting up off the coastline there. Pretty good model agreement and ensemble agreement as well. So... I mentioned those tropical systems that are across the Pacific Ocean at this time of year, and you can kind of see these tropical systems here. They inject their energy back into the jet stream. And if I put that into motion uh, here, I'll put it into motion a little bit more. You can see that one spinning off the coast of Japan, and then it injects this energy here. That's going to get caught up with the jet stream there, and that's what's going to dig around the base of this trough and probably develop into a pretty uh, beefy system right off our coastline there. And that you can kind of see how that affects the Pacific Northwest, some old tropical remnant moisture off from from the Western Pacific Ocean. So yeah, these typhoons out there and tropical systems do affect our weather all the way back here in the Pacific Northwest. Now, looking at 200 millibars, about 39,000 feet up in the atmosphere. If you're flying to Japan, you can see how a flight dispatcher might want to avoid this, right? You don't want to just fly into the headwinds, so they're going to be planning around that as well taking more of a great circle route or whatnot. But if you're coming back, you want to get with this jet stream and really increase your time on the way back. So you can see the troughing here as we go on in through the weekend and on into early next week, look at that trough really set up there. And then you can imagine how that energy from uh, the tropical systems across the Western Pacific Ocean get caught up in that. And the energy can be impacted and brought upon us here in the Pacific Northwest. So yeah, there's the jet stream there at 39,000 feet up in the atmosphere. So here's Seattle Tacoma. Check it out. The control run has up over eight tenths of an inch as we go on in through the day on Monday. Pretty wet system. You can see not all the ensembles agree, but they all agree that something is coming as we go through next week. You can kind of see the ensemble mean is right there, just over a third of an inch for Seattle. 
that's just the first system anyway. And you can kind of see Quilio getting clipped by that first system there and then some bigger amounts, but still some pretty good disagreement between the ensembles on just how much is coming, maybe up towards three quarters of an inch or so. This is up into uh, Bella Bella, Campbell Island, Vancouver, British Columbia, not Vancouver, British Columbia, but British Columbia. You can see that initial shot there of precipitation and then initial round uh, or rounds are going to continue to come through as we go on in through next week. Here's Vancouver International Air Airport. A little bit better chance of some here as we go through this weekend getting clipped by that system moving into western BC and then the next frontal systems after that as we go on in towards next week. There's Portland. You can see right just above a quarter of an inch here with that frontal system as we go through the day on Monday and the control run actually keeps it below, you know, underneath two tenths of an inch snow. Not a lot, but anything will help. Spokane International Airport, less as you move off to the east. Now, Quilly, trying to see if there's any windy periods coming up. You can see some of these individual ensemble members do show some gusty winds up over 50 miles per hour, but they're kind of far and few between. So we really don't have a big model agreement on just how windy we're going to get in this period just yet. So we'll be watching that here uh, over the next few days. And this is Hoquiam as well. You see some ensemble members up over 41 showed 52 miles per hour, but uh, overall the mean is not very high. Seattle, Tacoma, something similar there as well. There's a chance for a 40 mile per hour gust in there but it's really not very high right now and six to ten day and near normal across much of the west coast it's, uh, there's a kind of a mixed bag here for the pacific northwest and the above normal signal continues as we go into october 4th i don't disagree with that one right now with everything we just looked at eight to 14 day the entire lower 48 is above and still got that above normal signal in the same time frame so uh, check out the Patreon page as well. And just a reminder there, if something happens, some, like, some other kind of hacking attempt, it's happening to a lot of YouTube channels here. And I think I've got it solved. And I think I'm pretty vigilant on everything right now. So I don't expect it to happen again. But if it, if it does, the, the Patreon page is operating completely independent of the YouTube page. And check back here to get any updates. So anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. We'll do this all again tomorrow. We'll break everything down. We'll get a little bit clearer picture on what is going to come with those frontal systems over the next few days so keep checking back daily and i will talk to you guys later